Hello and welcome. I am really excited to talk to you today about resources that will help teachers build culturally responsive classrooms. My name is Anika Forzani. I'm the president and founder of Language Lizard and the author of a teaching manual that provides lessons and activities to support culturally responsive teaching. My goal with this presentation is that you'll walk away with a better understanding of how you can make strides in building a culturally responsive classroom without reinventing the wheel. I promise you'll leave here with free resources that you can use in your classrooms. So in this presentation, first we'll spend a few minutes going over culturally responsive teaching, what it means and how to achieve it. Then I'll show you some unique resources that are being used in schools and homes throughout the country to bring diverse cultures and experiences into the classroom. And I'd like to have a few minutes at the end to share some links to resources that you can use. For those of you who don't know Language Lizard, we're a leading supplier of bilingual children's books in over 50 languages. Our mission is to provide resources that help educators build culturally responsive classrooms and celebrate diversity. Resources that encourage students to accept and respect their peers and diverse cultures and feel welcome. Also resources that improve the homeschool connections and also that support the academic and social development of English language learners. And finally, resources that will promote the maintenance of home and heritage languages. We're going to talk about some of those resources today. Before we do that, I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the question, what does it mean to have a culturally responsive classroom? Essentially, culturally responsive classrooms recognize the importance of including a diverse range of cultures in all aspects of learning. They accept differences and highlight diversity without judgment, so there's no negative assumptions. In a culturally responsive classroom, diversity is not just accepted, but celebrated. It feels like a close-knit community that's welcoming to students of all backgrounds. The result of a culturally responsive classroom is that students feel safe, valued, and respected, and also that students are engaged. So how can you achieve a culturally responsive classroom? Well, for one thing, you want to have culturally representative literature and resources of many cultures. Children should see themselves in classroom books, lessons, and on the walls. And there should be resources for those who speak a language other than English at home. Many educators we work with create lending libraries with books students can read with their families. And many also offer audio resources to support language development. You also want to build time into the master schedule for community building and empathize and collaborate with families involving diverse families in lessons. So a lot can be done to include culture and language in lessons. Lessons can also include opportunities for homeschool connections. Teachers from different cultures can also model connections to their own home country. And lessons can include community building exercises. So we're going to look at some examples of lessons that do all of this. Another issue to consider when building culturally responsive classrooms is to be conscious of your own biases and those around you. How do you look at kids from other countries? Do you see them as gaps to fill or offer gifts to the class? What's being said in the teacher's lounge? Is that affecting the way you or others are looking at ESL students? To what degree are the diverse cultures and experiences being considered as assets? A lot of this requires self-reflection. Everything we do at Lang Language Lizard is to create resources that support diverse classrooms. And we want to provide resources so teachers don't have to create it all themselves. We'll talk about some of the resources in detail next. As a publisher, I'm of course a big proponent of having multicultural books in the classroom. We're a platinum sponsor of Multicultural Children's Book Day, which tries to get more multicultural books in classrooms at home and homes. And I would highly recommend that you um, go to their website. They have some fabulous resources to download. And there's a quote that I love that I'd like to share, which talks about the importance of offering multicultural and diverse books in classrooms, looking at books as both windows and mirrors. I won't read the entire quote, but I'll read a bit of it. Books are sometimes windows offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange. A window can also be a mirror. And in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as part of a larger human experience. Reading then becomes a means of self-affirmation and readers often seek their, seek their mirrors in books. 
So really having diverse books allows minority students to see themselves represented, and it allows all students to learn about other cultures and other experiences. So Language Lizard specializes in providing not just multicultural books, but bilingual books and educational resources in over 50 languages. Here you can see a list of most of the languages we offer, but we're adding new ones on a regular basis. We just added Telugu, an Indian language, and Oromo, a Cushitic language. For those of you who are not familiar with bilingual books, this is an example of one of our bilingual books. As you can see here, it has both English and a second language on the page, in this case, Chinese. This is a sample page from the book Yesian Chinese, A Chinese Cinderella, which is thought to be one of the original tellings of the Cinderella story. We strongly encourage schools to build lending libraries of bilingual books so that students can take them home and read them in English or in their home language. This promotes literacy and also provides an opportunity for children from non-English speaking homes to read with their parents, thus strengthening the homeschool connection. So there's a lot of research that supports building literacy in L1 to help in the development of L2, and bilingual books are really helpful in that regard. We offer a wide range of bilingual books. Many of them are multicultural stories that celebrate different holidays and traditions. For example, you'll see here a few books that celebrate, for example, the Eid, Ramadan holidays, Diwali, Chinese New Year, but then there's also some books that incorporate a number of cultures. For example, Welcome to the World Baby is a story about a child whose mother is about to have a baby, and so the child will have a sibling. And the teacher who teaches a diverse classroom asks the child to go and asks each child to go home and find out what they do when a new baby is born. This book also happens to incorporate learnings about the five senses. So it's a great way to learn about the five senses, but also do it in a multicultural context and learn about other cultures. Similarly, Mei Ling's Hiccups looks at uh, what children do when they get the hiccups and Wibbly Wobbly Tooth looks at what they do when they lose their teeth. That's My Mom actually is about a child of mixed race heritage who does not look like her mom, has a friend in a similar circumstance. And so the two of them in sort of a humorous way determine how they'll deal with that. Then there's books like Broom Let's Go, which looks at transportation around the world. We also have Yum Let's Eat, which is, has, uh, is about foods around the world and Goal Let's Play, which is about sports around the world. I also love using folk tales and fables in the classroom and particularly world folk tales and fables. They offer a great way to expose children to stories around the world, as well as impart great lessons. And again, just some examples here, Burry and the Marrow is a Bengali folk tale. The giant turnip is based on the enormous turnip, which is a Russian folk tale. And the dragon's tears is a Chinese folk tale that has beautiful brush illustrations, Chinese brush illustrations. Isis and Osiris and the children of Lear are slightly higher level from our Myths and Legends collection. And Isis and Osiris from Egypt and Children of Lear is a Celtic legend. And I love the story of Mami Wata and the monster. It's a wonderful African folk tale with a theme that you can't just judge people by how they look, you really need to know their story. For many of the diverse stories, we have free lesson plans on our site to help educators use these books to teach students about other parts of the world in an enjoyable and engaging way. We have many different themes, many different lesson plan themes for existing books, and more and more we're incorporating and including free multicultural lesson plans and teaching resources when we create new children's books. For example, we just introduced the book, The Biscuit Moon. Teachers can use this engaging story to explore ideas of climate change, how drought affects wildlife, and why it's imperative that we conserve and share precious resources. But this story is really interesting because it can also be read as a metaphor for communities making a new life far away from home. So there are some real connections for new immigrants who perhaps left their home to make a better life here. And on our site, teachers can access teacher notes along with links to child-friendly resources about climate change for this particular book. We're also really excited to introduce our new multicultural idiom books. These provide a fantastic example of how you can teach a core subject while bringing in language and culture into the lesson. The books help students learn English idioms while giving them exposure to settings and characters from around the world. Each idiom book contains a different theme, animals, colors, food, and nature. The books also come with free downloadable multicultural teaching resources. 
such as lesson plans, which teach students about figurative language, but in a multicultural context. For example, looking at idioms around the world or how different languages have similar idioms or exercises where they talk to parents about a favorite idiom in their language. There's a lot of ways to get ESL students and even their families engaged. In addition, there are idiom activities such as fill in the blank stories set around the world. For example, one of the fill in the blanks is about the Holi Festival in India. In others, about the Hanami cherry blossom viewing in Japan. In others, about animals in South America and much more. So the key here is that kids are learning the content, but they're doing it in a multicultural context. And the idiom books are available in both English only editions and in many bilingual editions where the idiom translation and the meaning is provided in a second language, such as Arabic, Burmese, Chinese, Haitian Creole, Spanish, Vietnamese, and more. Here's some sample pages of the idiom books. This one is once in a blue moon, something that happens very rarely. The, the sample sentence is my grandmother bakes lotus blossom cookies once in a blue moon. Lotus blossom cookies are popular in Thailand and other parts of Asia. So many of the immigrant children might know about that and be able to talk about that and other students will learn something new as well. Similarly, in this example, uh, which is a golden opportunity, the sentence is, I had a golden opportunity to take lessons with an expert musician. In this case, it's a very traditional Japanese setting and the woman is playing a koto, which is a traditional Japanese string instrument. Look at just one more example. This one, a needle in a haystack. It says, finding her lost oware stones was like looking for a needle in a haystack. And oware stones are used in the African Mancala game, which actually has become popular here as well. So there's really lots of opportunities to have kids see their cultures represented or learn about other cultures, but they're still learning the core subject of figurative language. It's just being done in a multicultural context. I also wanna point out some new books that are being created with the idea of building community and diverse classrooms. We're working on lesson plans to go along with these books, which are part of our Living in Harmony series. And there will be many activities that go along with them as well. These books will also be available in many different bilingual editions. The book, Who Are We?, helps students to understand and appreciate the diversity in our community and understand that we're stronger together. We Can All Be Friends shows how much we have in common, even though we're all different. And Be Kind shows the many ways to help others with simple acts of kindness. The book illustrations include diverse characters and settings from around the world. So it's really great for building community, encouraging kindness in the classroom, classroom and emphasizing our common humanity. And lesson plans will help to bring out these themes. In addition to the children's books, for teachers who are really invested in creating culturally responsive classrooms, We've had great feedback on our newest teaching resource, Building Bridges with Bilingual Books and Multicultural Resources. This manual includes numerous detailed multicultural lesson plans, diversity activities, literacy games, language profiles, and many more resources that can be used to foster a welcoming and inclusive classroom and can support diverse learners. So there's three different themes. There's 11 different lesson plans with detailed, processes, which I'll explain in a moment. And the themes are cultural awareness and diversity, folk tales, fables, myths, and legends, and holidays and festivals. So if we look at an example of one of these lessons, this one uses the book Samira's Eid to learn about Ramadan and the Eid holidays. And the beginning of each lesson tells the goal of the lesson and shows a snapshot of what the students will be doing. And it also provides some useful background information for the facilitator about the book or about the holiday. Then each lesson includes objectives, essential questions, material that will be used, how it links and integrates across subject areas, vocabulary. It also looks at procedures, assessments, accommodations, and differentiation. It includes uh, vocabulary flashcards. And then they, all the lesson plans also include extension activities and co-curricular activities. So for instance, in this example, looking at and learning about tessellations in Islamic art can be integrated with math or art lessons. And kids can have the opportunity to tessellate 2D shapes. 
the lesson plan also includes extension activities related to geography with project work in the Middle East. And of course, there's a lot of additional extension activities related to writing and the development of oral language skills. Many of the lesson plans can be adapted to different ages and different grade levels. Another example of one of the plans that I'd like to point out just briefly is an early lesson plan on names and identity. It's a great one to work on to get to know each other in the class and to build children's self-confidence. The goal is to provide children with tools that will allow them to become aware of cultural diversity and to foster relationships based on respect, equality, and diversity. So in this lesson plan, games are used to introduce the concept of diversity. Children will discuss what features of their identity they have in common with their peers, what they have that is specific to their identity, what features of their identity are visible, what features are invisible, and then pictures are used to encourage the realization of different cultural identities from around the world. Another piece of this lesson plan that I love is that children will create a portfolio of their work in an all about me folder that's added to and developed throughout the unit. So there's a lot for children to share and to be proud of. Um, they're able to, to really share their uniqueness. Some of the lesson and activities plans do, do not use books, but many use a bilingual book as the base of a lesson. So to make things easy, we created sets for teachers, which include the 10 books that are used in the lessons of the book, and then the Building Bridges book itself. So really this provides hours and hours of culturally responsive instructional time. In addition to our book, Language Lizard offers the Pen Pal audio recorder pen, which allows students to hear the text of many of our stories. A lot of the lesson plans offer optional suggestions for using the Pen Pal to support language learners. I will just play this video briefly so you can get a sense of how the Pen Pal works. Listen as stories come to life with the Pen Pal audio recorder pen from Language Lizard. Just tap the page and listen. In English, someone's been eating my porridge, he said in a loud, gruff voice. Or a second language of your choice. Mandarin, Goldilocks, and the Three Bears. You're in Chilliwad, too. Language Lizard starter sets include the Pen Pal Audio Recorder Pen, four bilingual books, an optional bilingual dictionary, and over 100 recordable stickers. Enhanced sets with more bilingual books are also available in many languages. A Pen Pal bilingual book set is a great resource that will engage children and enhance learning in diverse classrooms. So Pen Pal is really a fantastic resource and it really supports reading and writing and listening for language learners and teachers can also use them in centers or let students take them home and enjoy with their family. In addition, there's pen pal recordable labels that allow users to add sound to books, objects, and more. And even parents can read and add stickers, read books and add stickers to them. So really the possibilities are endless. In addition, Language Lizard offers multilingual posters so you can immediately make students from many cultures feel welcome just by putting that on their wall. Finally, please take a look at our website to find free resources. The multicultural lesson plans you can simply download from the website. We also recommend you sign up for our newsletter so you're notified when we have new languages or products. And we also provide a lot of teaching support there. And then we have a bilingual book giveaway, which we run ongoing. So you can sign up for that at languagelizard.com backslash win dash bilingual dash books. And you can also go to our blog, which offers numerous articles and information for educators and bilingual families. So please feel free to contact us if we can help you in any way. We love to get your feedback if there's languages or other resources that you need. And we appreciate your time. Thank you and have a great day.